I've always made it my mission to shine a spotlight, not just on the companies that Wall Street wants to hear about, but the ones that you would hear about. Which brings me to IonQ. It's one of the quantum computing plays that has dominated this market for the past year. You ask a lot of questions about it, and especially in the past few months, it's really gone. Well, I'd say the thing's up 476% over the past 12 months. And after pulling back hard earlier this year, it's now up 145% from its March lows. I know you want that. I don't blame you. I would, too. Now, I used to resist recommending highly speculative stocks like IonQ with no earnings, not much in the way of revenue. But in this market, anything with a good story has the potential to become a huge winner, and I work for you. So let's, shake, let's check in with Niccolo Damasi. He's the CEO of IonQ to get a better understanding of why so many people are excited about this. Mr. Damasi, welcome to Mad Money. Honor and pleasure to be here, sir. Big fan. Well, oh, thank you. Well, I've got to tell you, I first came across your company when Peter Chapman, who's your executive chairman, he spoke at GTC. Uh, and I think it had a real impact on Jensen Wong, who's the CEO of NVIDIA. And But I candidly, I asked him about it, and he said, Jim, you really got to study, 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 and then you still may not understand it. We have a very candid relationship. So I know we can't ask everyone to study, 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 but I want to give you the microphone. Just tell us why this technology is so exciting and where you fit in it. Yeah. Well, look, INQ is the biggest player in the business of quantum, right? We are the 800-pound gorilla of both quantum computing and quantum networking. So we're, in fact, a fully-fledged quantum internet company, right? So we're building the most powerful and most affordable quantum computers. We're also building the networks, nodes, repeaters to be able to communicate safely not just safely in a classical world, but safely in a quantum world where quantum computers are going to crack RSA in the coming years. You know, we are racing China, uh, we believe, almost single-handedly uh, for the Western world, if you will, to be the RSA cracker. And of course, when that happens, everybody's going to need our quantum networking equipment to make sure that the world as we know it and civilization as we know it goes on. Um, you mentioned Jensen Huang and GTC. You know, we've actually been on two GTCs this year, and they were both very impactful, right? So Peter did the one in March, uh, and then we did one in, in Paris, and we've demonstrated quantum advantage now twice. The first time was with ANSYS and Synopsys back in March, sure. and then more recently uh, it was in Paris where we announced the 20x speed up in partnership with NVIDIA and Amazon Web Services. Um, and no one can really say that a 20x speed up is not, you know, real quantum advantage. The era of what's called quantum supremacy is just around the corner. You know, it's coming in quarters and very low single digit years. Um, and that's getting people obviously pretty excited about the fact that we'll be able to do things to help every area of applied science. Well, let, let, right? let's, From drug discovery to logistics. Well, let, let's take pharmaceuticals, okay? Now, pharmaceuticals right now, we have a lot of pharmaceuticals that are meant to keep you alive for five months. There's a tremendous, maybe, hundreds of billions of dollars spent to make it so that you can live for four or five months. Um, are you guys thinking about instead of, uh, would it be instead of maintenance, are, would you be doing cure? Or is there uh, it, diseases that are really hard that people spend fortunes on and, have no, and no luck? You would address them. Where would you be in that vertical? Yeah. So all the bits of computational analysis in this world, from engineering to drug discovery, we announced a protein folding uh, partnership and success, uh, you know, just a month or so ago. And so our machines are now on the verge of simulating molecules, you know, that, that are probably 30, 35, uh, you know, atoms, molecules long. Um, and so we're doing things in the next year that classical computers will not be able to do to predict and also look at molecules through a quantum lens, right? right. Um, and so I think you're going to see a plethora of both chronic as well as uh, you know, critical, if you will, uh, drug discovery breakthroughs. And it's just going to keep going from there. As our machines get more powerful, we'll be able to model ever bigger molecules. Okay, so well, right? Jen, Same with material science. But Jensen told me that in the end, with companies like you, he would still have to play a role. That he now supports quantum, but he said, look, Jim, NVIDIA's going to be involved if it's quantum. They need us. Uh, why is that? Yeah, I think that, I think we're the biggest reason, honestly, in the last six months, why John Jensen has changed his his perspective on this sector. Um, we've demonstrated, you know, two partnerships with him, where we've shown common advantage, and we've shown that yes, we're going to grow with him in the coming years. 
kind of like when GPUs, you know, were an earlier thing and we were growing with CPUs. There will be a day where quantum processing units, particularly ours, where we are an order of magnitude, if not two orders of magnitude cheaper than any other path to what's called a fully fault tolerant machine in the coming years. Okay, well, and so we expect to take down more pieces of the total compute space as our energy needs are lower than classical and our machines are cheaper than everybody else's uh, in the space. Okay, so how did uh, the Defense Department discover you? How did the Air Force discover you? Well, we're a 30-year-old business, okay. right? So we were founded, you know, really on, on work that was done in the mid-90s. Our, our founder is the, is the father of quantum okay. computing and hardware. We're the first to demonstrate it in the lab. We're the first to commercialize, right? And these advantages, you know, Jim, last a really long time. Uh, reminds me of companies like, you know, ASML that have been plugging away sure. at, you know, effectively ultraviolet flashing of chips for 30, 40 years, and they continue to lead the sector. I've always believed as a physicist originally, um, and I, of course, was the SPAC sponsor that took INQ public. So I've raised maybe 85% of the total money invested in INQ, uh, you, you know, either the CEO of IQ or CEO of uh, the SPAC before. And, you know, the reality is I've looked at the space many times. The leadership that INQ has in its technology, because we started first and because we picked the best path, that runs with the least energy, runs at room temperature, gets to commercial advantage first, is something we're just building on, right? And we're building on that both organically and inorganically, as I've shown the last three or four or five months. Now, but we are talking about waiting to 2030 before we think about making money. Now, that requires a certain kind of mindset investor, right? I mean, you don't want someone who was thinking this thing's going to have its big breakthrough in 2026. Well, we're having big breakthroughs actually every day, almost every month. If you All right. follow the press, right? I, I, I so so it's bigger breakthroughs. And one of the things, Jim, that gets people excited, I think, about INQ in particular, is we're moving the the size of our machines forward so quickly that we're doubling the compute space. You know, sometimes every week, sometimes so. every month, right? And so. Gener generations of our machines are not a factor of too big or like Moore's law. They could be hundreds of millions of times more powerful. They could be billions of times, maybe even trillions of times more powerful because the scaling gets so vertical in the next few years that classical computers can't write out the size of the number if you look at two to the power of the large little qubits that we'll be producing. All right, right? well, look, so total, I, I, total I, I, I have to let it go there. I am fascinated by everything you say. I know I have to do some sort of special or something about this because our viewers want it and they are owed it. And I just learned, even in this short snippet, I learned why Jensen changed his mind and, and why he started talking about how it's sooner rather than later because of things that you did. So I want to thank you, Nick Lowe DeMassi, CEO of IonQ. It was great to have you on. I hope you'll come back. Look forward to coming back. Maybe, maybe we can co-host an hour next well, time. Why yeah, not? What, what, what we, we should do that. I've always been looking for someone to fill in for me. Anyway, Man Money's back after the break. Thank you. Good to talk to you. Coming up, Kramer takes your calls. And the sky's the limit. It's a fast fire lightning round. Next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.